Hi, I'm Bill Berry, and welcome to our Desert Adventures. Today, we'll look at two critical World War II training areas in the Anza Borrego Desert State Park and learn about how important they were to the success of America's air superiority during World War II. On September 1st, 1939, Adolf Hitler launched an invasion of Poland that triggered the start of World War II. It's easy to forget how slowly and reluctantly the world's most powerful democracies mobilized to stop him. France and Britain declared war on Germany two days after the invasion of Poland, but it would take them another eight months before engaging in full-scale war. The United States wouldn't join the war against the Axis powers until December of 1941, a full two years after the war began. By that time, France had been defeated and was occupied by Nazi forces. On December 7, 1941, the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor and awakened a sleeping giant. America fundamentally changed and began a mobilization that would eventually win the Second World War. The United States was willing to spend as much money as needed to win this war. Our federal budget increased from $8.9 billion in 1939 to over $95 billion in 1945. The total amount of war materials produced by 1945 was staggering. United States factories had made 296,000 warplanes, 86,000 tanks, 64,000 landing ships, 6,000 Navy vessels, millions of guns, billions of bullets, and hundreds of thousands of trucks and jeeps. More importantly, the United States had to rebuild a weak military. When Hitler invaded Poland, the United States was ranked as the 19th most powerful military in the world, just below Portugal. There were only 335,000 military personnel in the combined forces of the Army, Marines, and Navy. By the end of the war in 1945, that number would grow to 12.2 million service personnel a 3,500% increase. The United States would establish itself as the most powerful military force in the world and become the beacon of democracy for decades to come. Imagine the task of training 12 million service personnel in all aspects of war. This is where the California desert comes into play. More than 2 million of the 12 million World War II personnel were trained in and around our desert communities. The remnants of that training can still be found close to home if you know where to look. Today we'll look at two training areas that were designed and developed to help new fighter pilots learn how to hit enemy targets with bombs, machine guns, and light cannons. These two training areas can be visited only by four-wheel drive. One is what was referred to as the Borrego Maneuver Area near Okatia Wells. The other is on Clark's Dry Lake at the entrance to Rockhouse Canyon. On the flat dry surface of Clark's Dry Lake in Anza Borrego Desert State Park lie the crumbling relics of two rake stations and a large circular target designed for dive bombing. My friends Sid Burks and Robert Marcos accompany me on a trip to that site. Sid is a military historian as well as a pilot and he gave us a primer on what rake stations are and how they help new naval pilots perfect their dive bombing skills. This is what they refer to as the rake. And I don't claim this to be accurate in any way, shape, or form. It's only to visualize a concept. Although I did read an article that said there were four times. So, that, so in the middle of the bombing target, there was a pylon. So you would, the observer would put this in the middle of the pylon. When the bomb, practice bombs hit, they have a spotting charge. So it, it emit a puff of black smoke. Okay. So he'd line this up on the pylon right here, and then whichever that puff of smoke, whichever, these were numbered, one, two, three, four, or who knows how they were numbered, but he would call that in to another observer who is either inside one of these or up on a knoll somewhere, although I don't know where that would be. And the, so you get an angle from this rake station, and you get an angle from that rake station, and the third guy would triangulate them. 
and he'd figure out exactly where on the target the bomb dropped. How close it was. Yes. And if they were doing it for qualifications, he'd record the score. Ah. If it was just practice, he'd tell they were in radio contact with the pilot. He'd just tell them, you know, you're where you hit. So, um, so they're basically telling the pilot how close he is each time, and each guy has his own rake. Right. So the two guys have rakes. One guy is getting both of the all of the information, and then they're consolidating that, telling them how close they are to the target. Right. Triangulate. And get, I'm sure it's not all that accurate, but you know, fairly close, probably. Yeah. And that, you can see why they call it a rake. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. These rake stations were very well fortified. They were two foot thick concrete slabs that were 12 feet by 12 feet, filled with rubble to protect the observers from errant bombing. You can see the target is only 2,000 yards away, so the slightest miss could cause problems for the young men that were there observing. There were metal plates that were hung around the outside of the rake stations to protect the observers, but those are no longer there. The two rig stations at Clark Stray Lake, along with the circular bombing target, tell a story about young men who thought they were coming to California with palm trees and the Pacific Ocean, only to find themselves enclosed in a metal box observing bombs being dropped on a hot summer day. There were a total of four rig stations built during that era. The other two can be found near Military Wash and have been toppled because they were no longer stable. On the 20th of March, 1942, Major General Wilson, the Army Commander of the Southern California Sector of the Western Defense Command, informed his command that maneuver and firing rights had been secured in an area of the Borrego Desert, covering 400 square miles through a use permit with the State of California. A large portion of Anza Borrego Desert State Park was now under military control, and maneuvers including practice night driving, setting up artillery, bombing, and strafing exercises commenced. At the base of the Borrego Buttes, just off San Felipe Wash, is an obscure road called Military Wash. It was there that the Navy built two more rake stations and a 1.5 mile long track for pulling moving targets for rocket testing, bombing, and strafing. Military Wash contains the largest accumulation of ordnance we've encountered during our explorations of military sites in the Southern California desert and included practice bombs, rockets, along with hundreds if not thousands of large caliber rounds including 50 caliber, 30 caliber, and 20 millimeters. It was obvious that when these targets were, were fired upon, the pilots gave it the whole nine yards, a term for the length of a 50 caliber belt which was nine yards long. Interviews of local citizens living in Borrego Springs at that time stated that P-38 planes were roaring and diving overhead on desert practice missions. P-38s were armed with four 50 caliber machine guns and a 20 millimeter cannon, which matches much of the ordnance that we saw at Military Wash. By 1944, all the acreage that had been acquired by the Army through the use permit was returned to the state of California and normal park activities resumed. You had to be careful when traveling around Military Wash because of the possibility of unexploded ordnance, but no injuries were ever reported. Well, it's clear our desert played a very important role in our success in World War II. Thousands of pilots trained above the skies of our community and were successful in helping the Allies win the war. There's still a lot to find out here, and we're going to continue to search the Southern California deserts for unique historical stories.